It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, chief investment officer, the star of the show, and my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious June weekend? You know, Ryan, it's uh, summer's here, the days are long, and uh, things couldn't be better. I like it, Bob. If you're good, I'm good. So that's I'm good, my... pal. I'm good. It's the favorite time of year. <laughs> my father's happy, I'm happy. That's the kind of son I am. So, Bob, I got a little soccer trivia for you this morning since uh, the World Cup kicked off about two Thursdays ago in Moscow. Are you been, have you been catching any of the games? Are you talking about football or are you talking about soccer? <laughs> I'm a real American, so football to me is uh, the old pigskin on Sunday, so I'm going to call it soccer since uh, I'll stick with my, my U.S. roots. I think it was, uh, it's football when you watch it on the World Cup. It's soccer when you watch your three-year-old play it on the uh, baseball field. <laughs> exactly. Well, the International Federation Association, or called FIFA, which is the governing body for football or soccer, whatever you want to call it, what do you think they're expected to make on the World Cup this summer if you uh, had to put a dollar figure on it? $50 million? $50 million, That's your best guess? That's my best guess. Try they're going to rake in about six billion in revenue. Come on, <laughs> yeah. Hey. So you weren't you weren't a little off. You were really off. I must be watching soccer. And that's <laughs> the, well, the crazy the crazy thing is, it's up twenty five percent. They're estimating from the previous tournament. So that's pretty crazy. It's just worldwide. You don't realize it here in the U.S. I think, but uh, talk about serious business. That's real money. Mm, that is real money, Rye. That's truly what it is. <laughs> Well, we've got a great show this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about your retirement plan and how it's a working document. Bob and I are going to discuss why you can't just set it and forget it. We're going to talk about overconfidence. You know you might be guilty of this. What dangerous decisions do we make with regards to our investment and retirement planning because of pride and overconfidence? We're going to tell you some of the hubris and the mistakes that you make in your retirement planning. And we have this week's financial pornography. There's a lot out there in the news media that you need to avoid, you need to be aware of. Bob and I are going to break it down for you. And on this week's Spotlight segment, where we actually take a real retirement plan and break it down, we have our star certified financial planner on the show this morning, Michelle McKinnon. She's going to talk about a real retirement plan and give you all the ins and outs of what you need to be doing with your planning. So let's talk about fine-tuning your retirement plan. And you know, I'm a guitarist, and I know when I play my guitar for a couple hours, it tends to get out of tune, so I need to retune it. And very similar to that is, and Bob and I talk about this a lot on the show, your retirement planning is not something that you just put in place and hope for the best. It's a working document that has to be adjusted often. And Bob, when we talk about adjusting our retirement plan, the one place I think about that needs to be readjusted a lot is the amount of risk you have in your portfolio. Well, absolutely right. The thing is, people don't really understand risk. You tend to predict the future based on your most recent experience. Now, yes. you've you know worked at Merrill Lynch for a good part of your career, and you've, you've also met with clients from other firms. How does the average wirehouse or financial services firm set your risk tolerance? I remember very well, Bob. It's usually a six or seven question question risk tolerance questionnaire that you fill out and that determines everything. So basically, if you're uh, sitting down after 2017 where your statement went up every single month, 12 months in a row, you feel a little more optimistic or a little more pessimistic when you answer those questions. <laughs> in my experience, when the market goes up, our animal spirits are out, our ability to stomach risk all of a sudden magically becomes higher. And how about the inverse, right? You have a year like 1994 where everything went down, where your statement went down every single month. How do you think you answer those six or 10 questions of that questionnaire then? Your bravery goes down a lot, Bob. Your appetite for risk diminishes probably just as much as the market goes down a lot. 
Yeah, so probably I would say that the risk tolerance questionnaire is, you know, the biggest risk to your financial health because we get more brave when the markets are doing well and less brave when the market's going down. Time and time again, you'll buy a new issue, say, oh, I'll, I'll take a flyer. I don't care if I lose 20000 or 25000 You know, it's down 2000 You're screaming the next day, get me out, get me out. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden your bravery has gone. So I think that, you know, if it's volatility, which is really what prevents you from, you know, making money and being a successful investor, how do people overcome volatility? Yeah, well, I think that's the problem, right? You have to remember as human beings, we're terrible investors. You know, we always <laughs> want to make the wrong decision. It's just it's just our, our human nature. So I think, you know, the, the really important thing here, Bob, is is you don't want to fill a risk tolerance test and determine what the risk in your portfolio is. You want to make it goal based. What risk do you need in your portfolio to get to your goals, period? So it's not that simple, Ra. You buy low and sell high. <laughs> well, it forces you to do that because if we were going to just go on our gut instincts and how we feel, we would always do the opposite, right? We'd always buy more when the markets are up because we're feeling good. And we always sell when things are going down because we're nervous and we're scared. And that's a very, very bad way to build a financial plan and an investment strategy. Well, you know, the biggest problem you have is when the markets are good, you know, you, you don't open your statements because you know that the uh, the statements look like they're doing really well. When the markets are bad, you don't look at your statements because you don't want to feel bad about yourself. So it's human nature to not pay attention. And really, you do need to pay attention. You have to understand, you know, what the potential volatility is in your portfolio, which is going to make you make a potential mistake. Yeah, I think now is more important than ever, right? We've had a huge run up in the markets over 10 years. We need to address the risk, especially when things are good. The worst time to make a decision about your portfolio is reactively because when the market pulls back, it's already too late. And now if you're on the cusp of retirement five, 10 years out, or maybe you're in retirement right now, it's so important to know what your downside risk is. Because I find, Bob, the most powerful thing you can look at is, well, this is my net worth now. Let's say I have a million dollars. If the market pulls back, that million dollars could go to half a million dollars. Am I going to mentally be able to handle that? You know, the answer probably no. No, it's definitely no. Unless you're away on vacation on Mars and you miss it all and you come back and it's recovered. <laughs> Which is a great strategy, by the way. <laughs> when the markets are going down, that's the time to go to Mars, hang out on a different planet and then come back later. But for most of us, we live in the real world where the news is on 24-7. We can see the value of our portfolio every second of the day. That's why you need a real discipline that has nothing to do with what's going in the market right now, but what your long-term goals are. Yeah, and the great news is, right, this volatility is what really does create total return. So if you're a smart, informed investor, you have a portfolio built based on your goals, volatility is the engine of helping you to perpetuate and create your wealth. So you've got to be educated about it. You got to understand it. You got to embrace it. And then you have to have a strategy that fits your emotional makeup. Yeah. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm winging it. I don't have a strategy based on discipline. I don't know what my downside risk is. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that gives you a full assessment on your financial situation. Simply bring in your statements as they come in this month. Make it easy on yourself. Put them in a folder. We'll go through everything. What we'll do for you is we'll build you your own personalized financial portal so we can take a bird's eye view of your whole situation. And we're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at risk, diversification, what pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? Next time the market goes down, are you protected? Is your portfolio bulletproof? We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in financial portfolios, from mutual funds to annuities, insurance products. We're going to show you all the hidden costs in your portfolio and potentially lower the fees on your portfolio. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is your income gap? How are you going to replace the income when you're retired? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. Then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies we've been working on now for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success.
All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. There's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne. We're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer and Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This week on the Street of Dreams, the big stall continued. And the Dow, after an eight-day losing streak, matching its longest since March of 2017, is now down for the year. The big story, of course, remains the trade skirmish with China that has started to look like it's progressing towards more the trade war that the market has feared. To be sure, continuing down this tit-for-tat strategy path is not what the market wants. And investors do appear to be getting impatient with this back and forth based on the reaction of the markets over the last two weeks. Now, government policy has influenced investors' confidence this year, and unfortunately, not in a good way. Our belief is this market has been clouded by monetary, fiscal, and trade policy. And I think it helps to separate the clear market signals from the noise. For example, trade reform contributed to a remarkable 26% increase in earnings and a 12% boost in cash flow for the first quarter of 2018. Forecasters are calling for a very healthy 2019. Companies have announced plans to buy back $650 billion of their own company stock, which will be an all-time high. And capital spending jumped 20% in the first quarter and is on track for a 10% increase for the year. See, overall, economic growth continues to expand with the effects of a strong job market and personal income tax cuts combining to drive consumer spending. But for now, it appears the market is overemphasizing the risks and overlooking many of the potential benefits. When the policy-related clouds that are hanging over the market fade, investors will once again focus on the fundamentals. But by then, the buying opportunities presented by market jitters will be gone. See, the disciplined investor recognizes that bull market declines come and go fast. And the time to buy is when prices are declining and the underlying fundamentals are growing. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio built to win in this volatile environment? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call or simply text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Let's see what people are saying about those other financial guys out there. I wish you could just shut your big yapper! Looks like you'd better stick with us. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we keep it simple. And of course, we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great baseline to get you started in the financial planning process. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. It'll give you a nice breakdown on how to start the retirement planning process, what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, let's discuss two of your most famous, what we like to call here at Payne Capital Management, Bobisms. Two of my favorites are, don't confuse brains with a bull market, and it's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to stay wrong. So let's take those phrases and let's apply them to real life financial planning. How does that sound? That sounds terrific, right? I think don't confuse brains with a bull market just speaks volumes. We could spend the rest of this show on exactly (laughs) what that means. And I, I like to think of it as when the market's going up, sometimes we forget It's not because we're smart that we're making money. It's just because, well, right now, this is a bull market. This is when things go up. Yeah, and and I'm so smart to have been there. 
You know, you go back to every bubble in history, whether it was the tulip mania or there was the tech bubble or a recent housing bubble. You know, people all of a sudden knew things that didn't exist. For example, the real estate bubble, you know, real estate never goes down. It goes sideways for a while and then it goes up. Uh, right. You can't lose. So it's a, a can't lose mentality. And, and I know everything about it now because I've owned 10 houses that I flip at settlement. Yeah, I remember those days. And that ended really badly after the housing crash in 2008. So, <laughs> and all markets work the same. It's just we forget we're in the mix of it that a lot of times, you know, things are cyclical. And I think it's really important to understand what part of the cycle you're in. And a lot of times it's hard to do that if you're looking in between the trees and not looking at the whole forest. Hey, Ry, if I gave you all the economic data for next year, you know, ironclad, absolutely nailed every prediction, where the economy is going to be, where the dollar is trading, what the GDP is at, you know, what the earnings per share growth weight was per quarter, per sector. If I told you exactly where every economic number was going to be, you still couldn't predict the performance of the market. Sadly, that's true. I mean, think about the Fed. They have all the information in the world. And they never get it right. <laughs> they were calling for inflation to go up for like the last five, six years, and they were wrong. So it doesn't matter how much data you have or how smart you are or think you are. The reality of it is it's like predicting the weather. Even if with all the best weather instruments, they don't always get it exactly right. And you know what? The nice thing about the markets is you don't necessarily need to be that smart. No, you don't. Because you know, the, although the economic data is totally correlated, with the performance of the stock market, it's not a one-to-one correlation. I mean, 2010, we had a fabulous year. 2011, the fundamentals were better. We didn't make any money. 2012, we had the same fabulous numbers and the market went straight up. So you try and time these things, it's going to end in tears. And you're absolutely right. You have to be in to win it and you have to be in before it happens. And there's absolutely no predictive power in what you're reading in the newspaper right now. Yeah. I met with someone this past week who is deciding, well, maybe I want to do it by myself, Bob, or I'm going to hire an advisor. And the same person was telling me back in 2008, they got out of the market, which was actually a pretty smart move, but they never got back in the market. And I'm thinking, man, there are big decisions to have to make on your own. And you can't just be right once. You've got to be right a lot if you're going to be making big decisions like that. Well, it sounds like right in 2008, he confused brains with a bear market and then forgot to turn his brain back on for the bull market. And maybe that's why the average investor over 20 years has made only 2%, while an investor working with advisors made 400% more. Which brings me to my other favorite Bobism. It's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to stay wrong. Greatest advice ever, Rye. <laughs> yeah, because you said it. <laughs> Self-proclaimed greatest okay, advice I forgot ever. about that. But besides that point, I mean, so many times people just stay too long in a bad investment and they just think tomorrow's the day, or they have an overconcentration in wealth, and they're too afraid to take money off the table because they might miss out a little more upside. Yeah, and I think it also reminds me of the same person I met with this past week, and I, I give him a lot of credit because he knows he's been sitting in cash now for several years, the market's been going up, and he was pride to the side, I need to talk to somebody, and I've, I've got to get the ship right back on course here. And it's hard to do that because our pride does get in the way. I know, Bob, you're talking about it client you've been working with for years. You finally got them convinced them to get back in the market after you know years of sitting on the sidelines, waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah, I know. You just got to keep coming back to the well and eventually get them to follow the path to success. But, you know, Ryan, really comes back down to the day traders that, you know, left their day jobs back in the bull market of the 90s so they could day trade. These are doctors and lawyers, executives. Dr. Terrence O'Dean at UC Berkeley wrote a great book and study about this. How did these people make out, right? Did they make a lot of money? No, I think uh, they, they stuck to their day jobs eventually. <laughs> yeah, they all went back. They, yeah. they actually yeah. lost all their money. And the reason is, is not because they were dumb. It's because they were smart and they were logical. Yes. And there's nothing logical about investing in the markets, as we know, after many years. No. And yeah, exactly. Basically, what they did is they traded themselves into oblivion because they thought it was illogical not to act on every new piece of information. So they would trade on every bit of information that came over the internet and basically lost all of their money. Yeah, it's uh, we've we've heard that story over and over again, and it's and these stories are as old as the hills because market cycles they're not exactly the same, but they tend to rhyme, and that's why it's just so so important to put our ego aside, you know, get the right advice and get the right discipline in place 
that's not putting all the pressure on us to be master of the universe. You know, how many times do you see a lawyer or a doctor or a corporate executive take half of their retirement savings and open up a restaurant? Because how hard can that be? Right. Uh, if people think because you have expertise in one area, it's going to translate somewhere else. Yeah, exactly right. It's kind of it's you know, and I think we live in a world today of specialization, right? The the advent of I do what I do best, and I delegate out to other people what they do best, and that's become a much more successful formula than trying to be a Renaissance man or woman. Yeah, and if you're thinking, you know what, I'm tired of competing with the street, I just want to succeed and achieve my goals. What we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers, and you saved at least two hundred thousand for your retirement. My son and I will run for you our total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but you have to be one of the next few callers. And if you are, here's what we're going to do for you. We're going to have your tax return reviewed with our CPA partner just to make sure that you're utilizing every tax benefit currently legally available. We're going to have our estate planning attorney review your legal docs, your wills, your trust. Hey, maybe you don't even have a will. We're going to help you get on that path to having an estate plan that's not an IOU, to the IRS. And lastly, we're going to look at all of your portfolio holdings. Now, we don't need you to do a lot of work. Just take those statements as they come in, throw in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, text us, make an appointment. We're going to take all that complex information and reduce it down to apples and oranges. We're going to show you on our investment al analysis spreadsheet whether or not you have a portfolio that's built to win. We're going to define the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. You don't want to be in something that you're staying wrong. You don't want to be wrong. You want to be right. We're going to look at your cost, your fees, your hidden costs. You may have a portfolio where you're overcharging yourself. We don't want that to happen. Pick up the phone. And lastly, we're going to look at your income. We all have an income gap. When we're in retirement or about to retire, we want to make sure that gap is filled with a repeatable cash flow from your total portfolio that's going to give you an annual income that you can't outlive. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for 43 years. We want to help take families like yours from your financial point A to your financial point B and do it with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we have 10 slots. Give us a call now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot. Get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. 6692. That's call or text 844 752 6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what horrid advice content did you find out there this week in the world of financial pornography? You know, Riley, it's kind of twofold. You know, first of all, I found out there are these five hedge fund managers made these predictions. Now, the first thing I was horrified at that there's still hedge fund managers out there charging <laughs> two and 20 and underperforming the market every single year. Did you say, but Bob, uh, ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things? I think ordinary people trying to take extraordinary fees uh, is the way I like <laughs> to define it. Yeah, uh, yeah, well so, <laughs> but this really blew my mind because all five hedge fund managers are predicting the stock market will crash. Shocking. Very, yeah, shocking. very shocking. Now, yeah. when do you think the stock market's going to crash? We have five different opinions, so we have five different time frames. Now, the first one is you can expect the worst to happen, and it's imminent. Imminent. Wow. All right. But the second <laughs> hedge fund manager says you can expect the worst, not this year, but in 2019. We're on a collision course for disaster. Wow. That's amazing foresight that he can predict that out that far into the future. That's like me telling you, Bob, next year in May, 
on Tuesday the 19th, it's going to rain. <laughs> Here's the next one, right? Uh, yeah. The next manager said it's going to be in 2020. And his rationale is because we have the strongest economy in 40 years. I'm still scratching well, my head on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah next. <laughs> the fourth one agrees with him. It's going to be 2020. So we know for one thing for certain that there's not going to be a crash in 2020. <laughs> and lastly, this was the best one. This was this president of a uh, hedge fund, and he expects the worst to happen. Get this right. It's anyone's guess. <laughs> That's not really helpful. <laughs> I, have to, I mean, there's no, uh, I think something bad is going to happen. I just don't know when. Thanks. He doesn't Thanks know when, advice. but here's what he's sure of. You're going to okay. lose 60%. Wow. Well, that's excellent foresight. I'm happy to pay a premium for that kind of advice. The only thing I don't understand is they probably should have done it down, you know, I don't like 60%. It should have been like 60.24% for me to believe that they're actually professional prognosticators. <laughs> well, I mean, it goes back to what we, we talk about again, at nauseum on the show here, is just you can't predict the future. You know, it, it's always buyer beware when someone is master of the universe and mm -hmm. has some gifted insight into what we call the unknowable. And because we know if it's a surprise and it's unexpected, it's unexpected for a reason because we have no idea it's going to happen. So when anyone has a clear view like that, I would be very, very nervous to make an investment decision where I'm going to put my money based on someone's having a real clear view of the future because that for sure we know is not possible. Well, you know, the great thing about being a financial advisor for 43 years is we have thousands of clients who have opinions and whatever the consensus opinion is, it's never right. <laughs> it's never right. Exactly. Exactly. When everyone agrees, what's the old saying? When you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. <laughs> it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> no uh, truer words are ever spoken, Rye. Well, Bob, our alma mater, again, was in the news, making headlines. Oh. Merrill Lynch, man, they just Poor can't. Mother Merrill. Poor Mother Merrill. Or Bank of America now is probably more accurate because they don't like to espouse that they were Mother Merrill as well anymore. So Bank of America Merrill Lynch announced this past week they may reverse its stance on fee-based retirement accounts. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They, they told everybody that that was in the client's best interest is the reason they did that. Yeah, so just a quick refresher. They went, About a year ago, they said that if you're going to have an, a retirement account with Merrill Lynch, they have to charge a fee base as opposed to just paying a commission or every time you buy or sell something, you pay a commission instead of fee on the assets. And now they're reversing that. <laughs> How do they explain that? It's no longer in your best interest? Yeah, exactly. A year ago, it was, hey, you know, we're going to move away from commission base because it's not in your best interest. And now it's like, hold it, wait a second, wait a second. We're going to go back to the old model because that's in your best interest now. So I don't think they really know which one is in your best interest. So I guess the, the presentation is this. Well, we made this move last year because it was in the best interest of your bottom line. We're making the move back to where it was before because it's in the best interest of our bottom line. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, I suspect Merrill Lynch is making more money <laughs> when they had a commission-based model, which may not be in your best interest, but they never come out and say it that way exactly, which, you know, it's really important. I, we hear a lot about this right now, this whole fiduciary rule. You might be saying to yourself, I have no idea what that means. And really all that means is there's different advisors out there that by law have to work in your best interest and don't work on a commission basis, whereas there's other what we call old school brokers that do work on a commission basis and they don't have to act in your best interest. So that's why it's so important, Bob, that when you look to see who you're working with as your advisor, make sure they're actually a fiduciary because a lot of times like Merrill Lynch here, they're not going to be. I mean, who wouldn't want an advisor who invests your money like they invest their mother's money or invest your money just like they invest their own? That's what a fiduciary does. I mean, I, my whole career, right? People would say, Bob, this seems complex to me. I just want to invest in the same things you invest in. And as a fiduciary, not only do we do that, but we're kind of obligated, we're obligated by law to make sure that we're treating that money as if it's our own. Yeah, it's kind of like going to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, I'm going to prescribe you what I've done for my own family because I know this is the best way to treat what you have versus saying, well, you know what? I just got this great pharmaceutical from a pharmaceutical rep that took me on a great vacation last year. Let's try that out on you because you know I get paid a nice kickback as well from the company to, to, to recommend this. What option do you want to pick? Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, this goes to show you there are conflicts of interest. And when your advisor works for a big corporation, corporations want their stock price to go up. They want their profitability to go up. 
And really, the client is a secondary consideration. It's bleak out there, Bob. It's very bleak. <laughs> um, and if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if I'm working with fiduciary. I don't know if I'm working with someone who works in my best interest. I want to make sure that I've got a portfolio that's based on my goals. It's based on my best interest. Here's your shot to do it. We have 10 slots open. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's a holistic review that looks at everything and we make it easy for you. Just get those statements when they come in this month from all your financial institutions, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. What we're going to do is we're going to load them into a personalized portal for you where we can review everything from a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all those critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. You know, what charges do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to show you all the hidden cost is in your portfolio. On those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products, we're going to show you how to reduce cost. We're going to look at diversification. You may have a lot of accounts, a lot of different places, all doing the same thing. We're going to look at everything to make sure you're properly diversified and you're protected next time the market has a big downturn. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. What is your income gap for retirement? We're going to figure that out and show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you have over 200000 saved for your personal retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. But there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. This is no pain, no gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan. It's Bob. It's no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we're from Philadelphia. We keep it simple, and we want to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest online video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive, just a nice baseline to get you started in the financial planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. Get the baseline started. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Income is so critical for retirement. You can download our series for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can always check us out on the World Wide Web. Just go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself <laughs> on the website. Go to bebullish.com. And you can catch me most weeks on CNBC, Fox Business News, doing segments. And you can check those out on bebullish.com as well. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us directly, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we're going to answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. So Bob, if I go into my electronic mailbox here, I found one for you from Mary, who's in Greenwich, Connecticut. She writes in, Beautiful Bob- place. That's an excellent, beautiful place. Love Greenwich. Uh, she wrote in, Bob, I have a stockbroker that I've worked with for 30 years, long before I even moved here. I like him very much, and I think he does a great job, but I really have no way of knowing. How can I grade his performance? Well, you know, Rai, I read a great book over the weekend called The Death of the Dinosaur, which is about wow. stockbrokers. Stockbrokers are dinosaurs. Let's be real. 
They really are. And, you know, I think unless, Mary, your stockbroker, as you define him, has evolved to more of a financial planner, then I would say you'd have to give him very low grade. And here's how you know. Do you have a strategy that's going to achieve all of your goals, net of inflation and taxation? Now, I don't expect you to know the answer to that. What I expect you to know to have is a wealth projection, something in writing that your stockbroker meets with you every year and updates to make sure that you're not taking too much risk or you're just taking the right amount of risk or the right amount of volatility in your portfolio to achieve those goals. And Rye, I mean, you look at, what, 20 different people a week with you know their portfolios that come into the office in New York. How many people are actually prepared to achieve their goals with the least amount of risk? Well, I think we talk about that income gap all the time. And it just amazes me how a lot of times the portfolio they have in place today is so dependent on the market going up or down. And as you and I know, Bob, year to year, the market is completely unpredictable. But unfortunately, your expenses in retirement are very predictable. <laughs> they come very often. <laughs> you know, so not Especially having hidden expense yeah. of uh, inflation. Yes, right. Cost of living's going up. We know Social Security, and if you're lucky to have a pension, usually doesn't cover your lifestyle. And I think the most simple thing that needs to be solved for you in retirement is that income gap. And most of your portfolios are not geared to generate current income for retirement. And it really needs to be transformed into that type of portfolio. And that's just not the case. You know, I don't want to be cynical, but you know, isn't it true that stockbrokers get paid a higher compensation for selling stocks than they do bonds? Bob, it's a dark, dirty secret of our industry. But yes, they and, usually and get paid. Might that have something to do with the decision to overweight or put the client in more stocks than necessary to achieve their goals? Oh, Bob, it's worse than that. A lot of times they, they come up with these products, things like structured products. I mean, it's never coincidence when we review a portfolio from a stockbroker that it has a lot of exotic products in there that you and I know the broker got paid very handsomely to put in the client's portfolio. And that definitely wasn't correlated to the client's goals, but more to the yield to broker, as we call it. Yeah. So I guess the best advice we could give Mary, everybody should get a second opinion. If you ask your stockbroker, she's going to tell you he's doing a great job. She's doing a fabulous job. You know, why not find out? It doesn't matter if they did a great or a fabulous job. Are you positioned properly for the markets we're in today? Do you have the portfolio that you're going to need for the next 10 years? Get that second opinion. Next yeah. question comes in from Ted. Ted in Haverford, Pennsylvania writes in, Ryan, it seems like inflation hasn't been very bad recently, which is true. Should I be worried about it in future years? Yes, you should, Ted. And this goes back to something we talk about a lot and what, Bob, you just talked about, is the portfolio of the last 10 years is not going to be successful in the next 10 years. And I would say inflation is one of the reasons. Oh, absolutely right. And, and inflation is insidious, it's hidden, and it's constant, and it compounds. And you know, a lot of times you don't realize it, but uh, the cost of everything's going up every day. Now, we see it when we get our tax bill, when we get a utility bill. Even when you go to the gas pump right now, gas prices are rising again. Boy, it always seems to happen, Rye, right as the uh, Memorial Day weekend comes in and the summer starts. Uh, suddenly, the gas prices go up. I always find that an interesting phenomena. Yeah, exactly right. We're starting to see it happen. In fact, the Fed came out this past week and said they're going to raise interest rates one more time than they initially said they were going to do it because they're seeing more inflation. And that is important because when it comes to your portfolio, that means that you need to have what we call inflation hedges in there, which you didn't need the last 10 years. So that means things like bond funds. Bond mm -hmm. funds are a very bad investment because as rates go up, bond prices go down, and you, then you're at, essentially at the helm of lots of investors who are going to be selling out and panicking, and that's going to be a problem for you. Well, Ryan, I got a question for you. Bob, On a scale ask. of 1 to 10... How financially organized would you say Ted and Mary are? I suspect if they were honest with themselves, Bob, they're like a three, because most people are a three. Now, if you were able to ask them right now, a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would they like to be? What do you think they would say? Bob, wouldn't we all love to be a 10? I would think so, brother. So if you'd like to be a 10 in terms of being financially organized, what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and saved at least $200,000 for retirement, my son and I will set you up with your own 360 financial portal. This will give you an opportunity to view your entire portfolio and net worth holistically, update it in real time, and have each and every one of your most important goals of life tracked in real time on a daily basis on screen when you feel like looking at it. 
If you're one of the next 10 callers, here's exactly what you can expect to receive. We're going to have our CPA review your tax return to be certain that you're not paying any unnecessary income taxes. We're going to look at your estate plan. If you don't have a will, we're going to get you on that path to having an estate plan that's not an IOU to the IRS. But most importantly, we're going to look at all of your investment statements. Now, take those statements, throw them in a shopping bag, get online, text us, pick up the phone, make an appointment. We're going to take all that information and break it down into a very easy to understand investment analysis strategy. We're going to be certain that your portfolio has the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be truly diversified. You don't want to have any overlap in your portfolio. You don't want to be overweighted in technology like they were in 99 and have your portfolio go down 70, 80%. We want to see that all your fees that are being charged are reasonable. Most of you have portfolios where you're being overcharged. I don't know about you, but I don't like being overcharged. And lastly, we're going to look at your income. We can increase the cash flow of your portfolio, but more importantly, we're going to analyze the income gap that you may have while you're in retirement or if you're about to retire. And finally, we're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting and utilizing for over 43 years? See, we want to help like we have helped many families take you from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, and do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary like pain capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we have a couple slots. Take advantage now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I like to give you simple, common sense things that you can do to tweak your portfolio retirement planning. And that's why we put together what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. It's a great baseline to get the financial planning process started. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. A great way to easily get started with the financial planning process what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And on this segment, we have a very, very special guest, our colleague, certified financial planner, Miss Michelle McKinnon, also seen on CNBC. How are Keep you, going, Michelle? Ryan. Keep going. <laughs> I'm fantastic. <laughs> I'll do anything to butter you up. (laughs) I love it. I love it. (laughs) So this is our spotlight segment where we dissect a real financial plan and we just look for what mistakes, what flaws people have done with their planning, essentially how we've corrected it. And you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give Bob and I the rundown and, and some of the things that you were able to help out with? Yeah. So wonderful people. 
They're in their mid 50s. And he came to me and it was just very much a fear of I know I have to do something and I have a fear of working till I'm 80. Oh, yeah. That's a real fear. It's a it's a real fear. And the sad part is whether, you know, and we did go through the projections and he definitely needs to save. But he's never sat down and actually took the time to say, do I have to work till 80 or do I not have to work till 80? How old is he now? He's 55. 55. Yeah. I mean, 80 is a long time for 55. Yeah. And especially since, you know, you've been doing this for so long, you're tired. You want to know when you want to retire. So I would say. That was a huge concern for him. We had to figure out when he could retire. Number two is income. He's like, where am I going to get income in retirement? That was another concern for him. And then lastly, where is he getting value? So he knows he's paying some advisory fees. He doesn't know if he's getting value. What does value look like? And then within that value conversation, he wanted us to look at his life insurance plan. Interesting. Yeah, Hmm. because insurance is a big part of retirement as well. What exactly is his insurance plan? Did he have an issue with or wanted to, to look at? Well, he has to pay $5,000 per month in premiums. Wow. Whoa. That's a lot, yeah. right? And and so, number one, he came to me being like, yeah, you know, we have this plan. We're really not sure. Um, I'm paying these premiums. I think it's a good idea. But nevertheless, I want you to review it. So we took the time to review it. And it, here's the issue that a lot of insurance plans are sold and not a lot are bought. I'm shocked, Michelle. <laughs> and you know, every insurance plan, you know, there is, there is the right plan for you. However, oftentimes you're not sold that right plan. Well, what is the purpose of the insurance? Is it just to replace his income or is he trying to create a legacy for his children? I think a little bit of both, Bob. And when we looked at the numbers, it made a lot more sense for him to buy term insurance and then invest yeah. the difference. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of the the dirty little secrets of the insurance world is it's a very expensive way to invest. And I think it's really important to understand exactly how your insurance works. My guess is, did he even understand how that policy worked? No, and who does? (laughs) We do. (laughs) Yes, we do, but no one else does. No. (laughs) Insurance, getting sold insurance is kind of like Chinese food, as Bob once said. It tastes so good going down, but you feel so empty later. (laughs) That's it's disgusting, so but okay. Well, the thing is with insurance is that, hey, look, it's a necessary evil. When you're young, raising a family, you have obligations. You have to replace that that income gap with insurance uh, before retirement. But, you know, it's something that should be reviewed constantly because sometimes the insurance policy can be upgraded and improved, but there's no incentive for the insurance company to notify you because they want to keep making as much money from you as they can. You need to review it. First of all, if it's necessary. Secondly, can you reduce the cost? And third, is the underlying insurance company still viable? Well, I know with our independent insurance specialist, they recommend every two years just looking at your policy to make sure it's still relevant. And now having said all that, Michelle, what solutions? It sounds like he wanted to know when he can retire. He wanted to know about his insurance policies. So what were you able to come up with to, to get him on the right track for retirement? Yeah, well, number one, we were able to reduce his costs substantially with the premium so we could invest the difference in the premiums and really help his retirement plan because he needed to save more. Uh, number two is we were actually able to triple his investment income that he's currently receiving on his portfolio. That means triple. Yeah, so he's 55. He wants to retire soon. It looks like here he's getting about nineteen grand a year in income, and you can bump that up to $67,000 a year. That has nothing to do with the market going up or down. That's just income coming in. That's pretty sweet. And like you said, Ryan, that income that you can't outlive, I mean, that's what we're trying to create. Because unfortunately, whether he has Social Security or not, that's just not going to cut it. And then, Well, I think last- the thing is that uh, by tripling his income, you're able to triple his compounding power. And how much more money is going to have in 20 years is not as guaranteed, but a higher level of certainty because you have all that income coming in that you can reinvest into these volatile markets. Yeah. And actually over a 20 year period, that's an extra one point eight million dollars. That's, that's real money. That's real money. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's that is that is real, what, what we call real money. <laughs> Bob and I are both in all. <laughs> that will keep them from uh, not uh, working till 80. I mean, it's just so much risk in having a plan where you have to work till 80. Now you can you can make a um, secured retirement projection knowing exactly when you can retire and enjoy your life. Yeah, and the other cool thing is it's it's not like an annuity per se. We're really hitting on annuities today, so I apologize. Right? When you turn on an annuity, it's the same income stream the rest of your life. The beautiful thing about a portfolio is like dividend yields increase. 
So it's like you get a pay raise on your portfolio over time, which is the other great thing. It's not a stagnant amount of income that you're going to receive over time because if you look at it historically, dividend yields increase over time and as interest rates go up, so does the interest on bonds. So it's like you know you have an increasing cash flow type investment versus a static one, which is huge. Right, that's an excellent point. You know, tomorrow our entire portfolio goes ex dividend. That means that the dividends declared that'll be paid next week. I went back to each of our portfolio strategies and the dividends higher this year than it was last year, than it was the previous year, than it was the previous year. So it's a uh, increasing dividend strategy is the best way to overcome inflation because you don't know what the inflation rates are going to be going forward. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Michelle, as Bob likes to say, another financial masterpiece. Well, thank you. (laughs) Great job. Um, And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a review like this. I need to figure out what my income gap is. I need to figure out what am I doing with all these insurance policies? What's my game plan for retirement? Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and our certified financial superstar planner, Michelle McKinnon, will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a review just like this. Simply just bring in your statements, wait till the end of the month, just put all of them in a brown paper bag folder. We'll break everything out for you and we'll build you your own personalized portal and we'll do a holistic review of everything. We're gonna look at all those critical components to your portfolio. We're gonna look at fees. What high cost investments do you have? Insurance products, annuities, mutual funds. We're gonna show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio so you have more money in your pocket over time. We're going to look at income. What is your income gap? When you retire, how are you going to replace your wages? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize and compound the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What unforeseen risks do you have in your portfolio? Are you protected against the next market downturn? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to answer that age old question. Are you gonna outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money gonna outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. This is your chance to have your own total financial masterpiece. Just simply text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a few openings left. If you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. No obligation, no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show. And I have to say, I think I'm more blown away than anything else that Michelle's here talking to us this weekend and not out at the Hamptons living the good life for once. For once, Ryan. I mean, you should feel privileged. (laughs) (laughs) Privileged and honored. Thanks for being on the show this morning. My pleasure. Big Bob. Great job, Michelle. (laughs) What's on tap for the rest of the weekend? Well, since I've given up golf, Ryan, I think I'll go down to the uh, sports shop and buy a tennis racket. Wow. I mean, that's stepping it up. And and, well, you're not retired, so I like it. I want to see you, you know, it's going to be football by next year. (laughs) <laughs> well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.